We didn't necessarily talk about that part, so I just, you know, she asked me, you know, like introduce and say all the time. I said, sure. You know, just kind of, I don't like to introduce and say anything. I don't to go from here. I, I do want to say this. Um, They're going to probably interfere with what you're currently doing. Just don't throw it out yet. Just kind of take the word and process it. You know, the goal is that we can all leave here implementing the word of God for our marriages. Amen. Because you're not just here for your marriage, believe it or not, somebody else is depending on you. That's right. Amen. Oftentimes we don't know that until things fall apart. Amen. And you find out who's watching you, who's drawing strength from you, who's getting encouragement from you. So it's, you're not just here for you. There's other couples lined up behind you right now yes. looking at you and how you handle things. Yes. So let's take the word of God and let's make that our basis. Because I'm going to start out and I've got to get you somewhere first before we can even really launch out to where I want us to go. Okay? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Our theme is unity. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, unity. Before I get into the definition of unity, I want you to look at something. Unity is spelled U-N-I-T-Y. <laughs> U and I. Yeah. If we just start thinking of unity as you and I, see, no matter which one of you say that, it's putting the other one first. That's good, That's good, sir. That's good. It does not matter. That's if awesome. I say you and I, it's putting her first. Mm -hmm. If she says you and I, putting me first. <laughs> if we walk like that, That's good. it already sets the stage for us being That's successful. Good. That's, That's good. good. That's good. That's good. That's good. So let, let's look at this thing called unity. Unity is the state of being one. These are just Webster type, uh, you know, nothing, you know, deep or anything. The state or fact of being united or combined into one. It says, as of the parts of a whole, it's unification. Another word for unity that you'll find is oneness. Oneness. And, and I believe that that's, that's what we need to concentrate on is the oneness aspect that's of good. unity. That's good. Because I'm going to probably say something that we, we have seen but not necessarily looked at. So you know how sometimes you read over things in scripture and then all of a sudden one day the light come on? Well we believe in God that the light's going to come on on some things that we've seen and heard but not necessarily know, okay, how do I take that and apply it? That's what we want to do here. Um, unity or oneness has always been God's plan for man. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. now, now, unity or oneness has always been God's plan for marriage. Not man's plan for marriage, but God's plan for marriage. You, you know, it's, when you look, um, boy, I, I, let, me stay, let me stay with where I'm at here. There's so many things that's running now. Go to Genesis chapter 2. <laughs> While you're going to Genesis chapter 2, I'm going to read something else, but my something else will be referred to from Genesis chapter 2, where I'm taking you. Just for sake, Matthew chapter 19, I want to read something there in reference to Genesis, and then we'll go back to Genesis. You know, um, well, let me just let me just do this. Matthew chapter 19, verse 1. They came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? 
And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Listen to what Jesus said. When there was an opportunity to discuss something related to marriage, Jesus didn't deal with the culture of the day. Right. He went back to the way it was originally right. designed. Good teaching. Amen. Amen. One of the faults that we have today amongst married couples is they're referencing the culture of today and not their original intent. Ooh, good good teaching. Teaching. So if we don't talk about unity, we got to go back to the original intent. Yes. Right. See, let me let you know, and, and Pastor Stone and First Lady Stone will attest to this, but we were in the uh, marriage um, seminar, if you will, for pastors. And one of the things Bishop Hines was saying that I thought was very interesting was there are certain things we can't even say today that we used to be able to say before. I can say you and your spouse and admit the husband and the wife or the wife and the husband. You and your spouse may mean something different today because of the culture of today. We used to be able to say things like, if we said, well, well, I, I remember when my wife was, was pregnant, we had, you know, yeah, y'all, we're pregnant now. <laughs> well, that meant my wife was pregnant. You weren't thinking that that meant that I was really pregnant. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that has changed. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, when you, when you said, you know, I have a spouse, you thought that meant that I had a wife, if you heard that coming from me. Now that can mean something different. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. When you go back, isn't it ironic? When you go back to the, to the very beginning, the Bible says male and female created he them. Mm -hmm. yes. See, God knew what was coming, and he was very specific. Notice when he talks about marriage, he says husband and wife. Mm -hmm. God doesn't use significant other. He doesn't use spouse. He says husband and wife. Right. Now, all of these other so-called marriages, when they marry, they don't say husband and wife. Two guys can't get married and say husband and wife. Two women can't get married and say husband and wife. So we got to always remember, whenever you want to look at something, go back to how it was originally intended. Okay, Genesis, you all are there? Yes. Uh, okay. Genesis chapter 2, let's start at verse 19. It says, And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So look at this. God formed all the living creatures. Mm -hmm. Adam addressed and characterized their behaviors. Mm -hmm. That's what you see when the Bible says he named them. He addressed them or he called them and he named them or characterized the very behavior of all of the animals. But now God is the one who formed them. And I'm saying all this for a reason, so just stick with me. Verse 20. Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the fowl of the air, and every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helpmeet for him. There was not found any aid or counterpart for Adam. So in all of the animals, after Adam finished naming them, characterizing them, there's nothing suitable or fit for him. Yes, yes. Okay, now that just clears up, that, that should clarify a whole yes. lot of this other yes. stuff. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I yeah. to be with animals. No, it's, yeah, it was, <laughs> but it's not, I mean, it's a whole lot of stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. Now people are wondering, well, you know, ain't nothing in the Bible against this. No, 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 here it is right here. <laughs> it already laid out, there's nothing suitable for you out there other than your spouse, or your husband, or your wife. Amen. Amen. Nothing else. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Unity always requires parts of the whole. I want you to hear that. Unity always requires parts of the whole. Remember our definition? The earth, the earth I, I've given you a part of what I, when we said from oneness, I mean from unity, 
It's combined into one as a part of a whole. 